Hey, hey, everybody. It's Jane. Happy Friday. How are you guys? So Jane from Chalk Mercantile and Surface Anthology. And I'm here to show you how to use um, antiquing glaze. This is Amy Howard at Home Antiquing Glaze. And hopefully you can see the difference between this side and this side because it's really, really important. Um, when you're creating milk painted finishes, painted finishes, um, and you know, kind of understanding how to work with color, how to uh, create age, right? It's called antiquing glaze for a reason, for sure. Hey, good morning, Shannon. It's 1243. So yeah, it must be early there, right, Shannon? I want to show you guys. Whoop, oh, I don't know what's going on with my iPad. I think it's the it's the network. <laughs> so, Shannon, can you see the difference between this side and this side? I'm going to come in a little bit closer. That is good. A, B. Hey, Julie. I just shipped your box. <laughs> Thanks, you guys. It's been crazy. Um, it's 944. Yeah, it's morning there. You're solidly in the morning there. Um, but can you guys see that difference, right, between this side and this side? Because a lot of people ask me about the antiquing glaze. And they're like, well, it's just this, you know, kind of light brown, you know, watery stuff. Is it going to affect color at all? Is What is it going to do? Why am I using this, right? Hey, Deborah, good morning or good afternoon. Deborah's down in Florida, right, Deborah? I think, yes. Yes, you see the difference, right? And you see it too, okay. But it's subtle. And if we... Talk, right? Just look at look at these colors together. Wow! <laughs> but you know, you would say, "Oh yeah, that's the um, that's the wisteria color, right?" And you see that side, how much brighter it is. And this is why I love, love, love um, a product like this, the antiquing glaze, because it's super subtle. Right, it's not in your face brown, you know, orangey wax that's like, you know, over the top. It's just, oh, thank you, Shannon. Hey, Cheryl. Julie, Julie said thank you. I just watched the Zoom and laughed so much with the talk about the Harry soap. <laughs> oh my goodness, we have fun. These ladies, by the way, if you hear them talking about Harry Soap or the Zoom call, I have a membership and I also have, and Cheryl's in this, that I have a workshop going on now too. There's a lot going on because if I can't shove it all in one week, you know, I, I don't know. I just wouldn't be me. What was I thinking, right, with the iron work and release? But um, I have a membership, the Service Anthology membership. And once a month, we have a Q&A call. We talk about that month's uh, workshop. We talk about what's going on, um, what they're up to, what I'm up to, and we joke around. Everybody's got a really good sense of humor. And it's it's art, it's creativity, right? We should have fun with that, for sure. Or the man cold. We were talking about a man cold. I didn't know what a man cold was. But, um, but all of that, and we're talking about some serious stuff about uh, creating paint finishes, um, you know, troubleshooting, that kind of thing. Oh, I love that everybody knows each other. Shannon knows Cheryl. Yay. I love it. So let me get to, let me tell you about the membership because it's open now, by the way, it is open. It is going to be closing at the end of this month, which is almost upon us, right? The shortest month of the year. Um, it's the Surface Anthology membership. It's $27 a month. It is a decorative painting membership. At the core is furniture painting, but the techniques 
um, that we are studying, you know, can be used on floors, doors, walls. We're doing 3D stuff, lots of textural stuff. Um, we use everything from chalk and clay paints to milk paint. I hope to get into, um, as we get into the year and welcome new members, making our own paint. I think that would be fun, right? Um, just like this glaze, you can absolutely buy it. This is a beautiful, beautiful color. I love using it. If you've taken any, well, if you've taken the antique finish workshop, I give you a formula to make your own glaze. And my members have their own little tricks that they like to share, which is great. Um, Cheryl says, one of these days I'll have, when I, you have more free time, you're going to join the membership. Oh, Cheryl, it, we would love to have you. Absolutely. And, and you would have so much fun, but we're already having so much fun, right, Cheryl? But then it would be like that inner circle fun. I don't know, like what, it's like, uh, it's, it's part of this community of, really fun, creative kind of um, ladies, women. So far, we've got all women, but we welcome you guys if you're watching this, right? Um, so every month, I'll tell you what's in there. There is a full workshop, and yep, full. If you're taking my, um, my fabulous plaster page workshop now, there's over 30 lessons. I tend to do that. But I tell everybody in my membership and in my workshops, it doesn't mean you have to do every single little thing in there and you get lifetime access so you can do it at a later time or as your project is kind of evolving. So every month you get a full workshop that is pre-recorded, so you can watch it at your convenience. You also get every month a live tutorial, which I do in our Facebook group and it's related to, it's like a kind of a spin-off um, or a variation on what we do in the full workshop. You get a shop discount, right? That is really good. So all your orders are discounted as a member. You get access now to over, I think it's over 35 workshops when you first join. And I also tell people, try not to get overwhelmed with all of that. But you get access to all those past workshops. Um, we have a wonderful Facebook community. They're fabulous. Cheryl says, no boys allowed with a Z. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You know, as a mother of three sons, you know, you have boys around and they do, or men, boys or men, right? They kind of change. They change the energy a little for sure. <laughs> Oh, and okay, Shannon's asking a question. We're going to get back to that in two seconds. Facebook community, I do a live Zoom Q&A. That's what we're all laughing about from yesterday. We do laugh and have fun, but we also talk about, like I said, troubleshooting issues, wins, support, um, techniques, all that good stuff. And there's a monthly raffle. And every month, um, members post what they're working on, and they get entered into a raffle, and they win a DIY, you know, product that I send to them. Hey, Danielle, sign me up, says Cheryl. <laughs> Deborah says, my trick is to do what you tell me to do. Absolutely. Listen, I have been in, uh, I'm in memberships. I'm in like, I love my sewing and needlework kind of stuff. And there are times I just want, them just tell me what to do. I don't want to overthink because I'm an overthinker. Can you believe it? A lot of us are, right? Just tell me what to do. I just want to do it. I want to actually, you know, get that instruction and get my hands to do it. So I I hear you, Deborah. Um, all right. So Shannon is asking. So now back to our back to our regular prime time scheduled show here. The antiquing glaze is very in my eyes, very similar to the mordant that I give you the formula to make, right? And I use it all the time. Um, I don't know exactly what's in Amy's um, antiquing glaze. I, I really think this is a low VOC natural product. But the mordant you could buy, and I give you the link in the membership and also in the workshops. Um, hey, Chris... Kristinam, oh, what a beautiful name, Christina. Hi there, thanks for joining us today. Um, the mordant that I give you the link for 
is, is a granular stuff made from walnut shells. And if you've been using Amy Howard or any of these kind of natural lines for a while, she used to have a stain, of an antiquing stain that smelled like tea and it was made from walnut shells and tea. So I think it's all kind of related to that. And, and you get this really beautiful, beautiful color that again, isn't over the top, you know, hits you over the head. Uh, and sometimes we want that. For something like this, I don't. I want something really subtle because I want that brightness. I just wanted to knock it down a little bit and, and look, at, look at the beautiful texture you get. This is just, and if you need to see the tutorial for this, it's on YouTube. It's I think it's the one or two before this. It's just the um, cracked gesso and this beautiful color I just got in, Wisteria Milk Paint. Let me show you how I do this. And um, and I wanted to tell you, back, back when I was a hairstylist, if you can believe it, I've been running around like a nut today and, and in the rain, in and out, in the wind. Um, when we wanted to knock somebody, if their hair was too yellow, we would use a violet color, right, to adjust it. Or if it was too gold, we would use a blue. You do the opposite of the, um, the color wheel. And that's what's happening here, right? This is knocking down, right, kind of mellowing out this color a little bit. So I use my little tiny for little projects like this. I use my little sea sponge, really perfect for this. And I have my um, antiquing glaze there. I have some water over here to rinse the sponge. And all you do is you just kind of move that sponge around. I think I'm gonna need to pour out some more antiquing. Curls love, oh yeah. When you, when, <laughs> oh my God. I, I Cheryl, uh, Deborah, it's like, I, I mean, Cheryl, it's, I look like a nut. I came in, my husband's like, oh my God, what's going on out there? He's working from home today. Oh. But yeah, we tend to get more fluffy and I was trying to calm my hair down before I came on camera. But you see what's happening here, right? I'm starting to reactivate that milk paint and it works really, really nicely for this, right? Kind of moving through those layers. And I put two and um, somebody asked me and I think it was Jane and I don't think Jane is on here. Oh, hey, from Spain, España. Oh, Christina, I was just watching a Spanish um a new show on Netflix and um, oh, I forgot it's about a little girl who goes missing and I have to I have to go to Spain Christina my husband's been there a few times and I want to go oh so welcome welcome from Spain yay it must be late there but don't you guys eat really late too I he told me that people in Spain will eat like dinner at 10 o'clock at night so maybe everything is pushed later all right, my I it's like I want to I really want to travel back, back to Europe. Ugh. Okay, so you see what I'm doing, right? So now I'm doing the second side, and let's see what it looks like. You have to when you're doing this, um, you want to make sure that you don't just keep using the same side, like and I rinsed because you don't want to then start depositing the paint and everything and make a mush out of your piece. So you could keep turning it. Oh, that's what I wanted to say. Jane Tucker asked me, Jane, thank you for this question. Are you just pouncing it down? Are you turning it? And I tend to kind of keep it close and turn it like this. And when I'm doing a large piece of furniture, I have a giant, use a big sponge or you'll lose your mind. It's 1,900 hours. Okay, everybody. What's 1,900 hours? Um, eight. <laughs> what is that? Seven hours afternoon? 
So is it like seven or eight o'clock at night, Christina? And Cheryl saying the USA is the only place on earth with early bird specials. <laughs> and then Deborah said, yeah, I love the early bird specials, right? Well, here's the thing, Cheryl. And I know my grand my grandfather from Sicily, it's seven o'clock. I was close, right? Or did I say that? Who even knows? 7 p.m. My grandfather would take a little siesta. So I think they are really taking those little naps. So then they can, you know, get feel get up refreshed. My husband said they work really hard in Europe, but they do, they 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 take care of themselves. They make time for friends and family. They have their little siesta, right? When they work, they work hard. But man, when they get together with their friends and family, they are, it's all about that. So yeah, but I can just see me trying to eat at 10 o'clock at night, even with a nap. <laughs> I think you have to build up to that, right? But oh, I was watching a program about um, the tapas, and Christina, forgive me with my pronunciation, but the tapas restaurants where you go and you get all these little tastes, all these little, like they look like little appetizers, little hors d'oeuvres. Oh, so good. And Spanish wine is so good. Oh, yum. Okay. So again, turn, 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 right? Keep it fresh, especially if you want to, um, like I've got the white cracked gesso under here. If I want to expose that white, I have to keep turning this sea sponge so I don't lay that um, wisteria color back on top. All right, heartburn. <laughs> Cheryl, right, you have to stay awake. You, you know, you can't just eat at 10 o'clock at night and go lay down, right? Americans are overworked, Deborah. I completely agree, I, I do, right? The worst is when, you know, you're out with friends and they're checking their work email. Let's all go. We should. That's why they eat. Whenever I watch one of my English shows, you know, they're always vacationing in Spain. The fresh prosciutto and olives. Oh, Spanish olives. So good. So good. That food is so good. And the sunshine and the olive oil. Oh. The flamenco, and I'm, I am, I have a drawing I did as a little girl. Remember National Geographic magazine, right? Now everything's online. And they did a cover back in the 70s of a little Spanish girl in her flamenco uh, dress, you know, with the beautiful, what is it called, the mantilla, all of that. And I wanted to dance flamenco, and I love flamenco. I love uh, Spanish, the classical guitar. I'm obsessed. And um, so that's really why I want to go, so I could see flamenco. And, of course, drink wine and eat those yummy olives. Cheryl, you could say that again. I'm in. I mean, wouldn't this be fun? God, we could rent a, a villa and paint and then go. Ugh. And the flamenco just looks so dramatic and just like you would get chills, you know? Oh, yeah, that's right, Deborah. Deborah is saying a trip to Spain to see surface textures and paint. Absolutely, right? They've got stuff there, you know, we think of old, you know, two or three hundred years old. That's new to them. Right? It's like, oh no, wait till you see. Um, yeah, it would be amazing. We saw that in Ireland too, like all those lime kind of washes and and uh, the paint textures. Very, very cool. It could it could be a write-off. We're going for work, for research. <laughs> all right, it just doesn't get more beautiful to me than this, right? Isn't this beautiful? And all all I used was the cracked gesso. Um, and this is on, for anybody who didn't see, it's just on a bare pine uh, frame. I got it Goodwill, I got three of them. And I might paint the other ones over to go with this because I was thinking about doing a little, a little triptych, I think it's called. I wanna put faces just like that. 
inside these frames and then hang them, you know, one on top of each other, right? Deborah says it's a beautiful dance, an expression of love or passion. You saw it in 2019. Oh, you're so lucky. It must have been amazing. Absolutely. It's a tax deduction. <laughs> I agree with Cheryl. Oh, yeah. But this, I'm not going to say, I guess for me, once you start to mess around with milk paint and you let it do what it wants to do, right? You, you go with it. You can create these kinds of finishes um, quite easily, right? And with not a lot of effort, but it looks like it has, you know, it looks like you did. And it's just really, really beautiful. Really, really nice. Now, when this really is like bone dry, if I feel like you could see the, the chips, right? The chippiness. If I feel like this frame is chipping too much, instead of using wax, which is always my go-to, I would use a matte sealer on this because that's going to, you know, kind of freeze the chipping where it is. And I would probably do a couple of coats with 24 hours in between each coat. But, I mean, it's just so beautiful. This will dry a little bit more but it still darkens up. And you still get that, you know, that wisteria color, but it's not as um, bright, it's not as raw, which I like also, by the way. And note, right, Cheryl, uh, Deborah's saying no two will be identical, never. You'll never be able to do that, right? And we like that, that's so good. Oh, Cheryl, a sweet little watercolor would be beautiful. Or a seascape, absolutely. I saw a show in Connecticut of miniature antique landscapes. Um, it's at the Florence Griswold Museum over, I think that's an old line. Uh, and to put one of those little um, oil paintings in here would be absolutely beautiful. My thing is I'm obsessed with faces. That's, that's, I taught figurative drawing. That's my thing um, for sure. So I would have to put like a little tiny person walking on the beach. Oh, right. You can't, isn't it, Shannon? It's so, I love, love, love milk paint. I really, really do. It's got such personality and you could do so much. And all I used was one color. This is not multiple colors of milk paint. It's that simple. Oh, Deborah's saying, I do clay and would love to put a clay face in the opening. Send it my way. Deborah, I would love to see that. So you're doing little sculptures. That would be amazing. Oh my goodness, that sounds absolutely beautiful. Hey, Amanda, thank you. Turn it over again. Absolutely. So here it is. I got these at Goodwill. And it's just a square that they kind of routered, you know, routered it out. And then, oh, I'll show you the, um, this is what was in, you know, the, the little thing. So I'll use this as my template. Or I might just paint over this and then do an image transfer of a face. And then just pop that in. But isn't that cool? And then, I think... I am going to have to add a hanger to this. It doesn't have a hanger, but, um, you know, that's easy enough. So, yeah, there you go. How easy is that? <laughs> you guys, thanks for joining me. Now I have to head down to the Deep River Shop. Thanks for um, local people are now discovering my space at G's Treasures in Deep River on Main Street here in Connecticut. Um, I do not have the entire Iron Orchid selection there, so please check with me first. I had a really nice lady message me this morning because um, I have to, I have to, I have to beg them for more space there. Every time I go, I tease the owner. I go, "You gotta just give me a little more space," but it'll happen eventually, right? IKEA sells, yep, and and as long as they're actually, I mean, the raw wood, Shannon is the best are the Ikea's uh, raw wood because that made this really easy because it's raw wood. 
Thank you. That will be easy to make with no routering. Absolutely. Not as heavy duty. Yeah, these were pretty, these are pretty thick. You know, this has got to be, this is an, an inch, probably an inch and an eighth thick. Shannon, Cheryl saying, Shannon, Ikea is a million miles away. I know, it's like you have to make a, it's like a trek. <laughs> it's a quest to get to Ikea, even in Connecticut. We have to drive to New Haven. And then it's like, well, we're spending the whole day here because we just drove through everything to get to this Ikea, right? I have to look at every single thing. Yep, the frames there look like they're raw wood. So that's perfect, you guys. And make sure, and I know Shannon does, make sure you troll Goodwill looking for frames when you go because um, you'd be amazed at what you could find at Goodwill and you know make sure you go through all the pictures. I know it's a pain, but frames are expensive and you could do a lot with them. You could change the entire personality. So I am off to Deep River now and then my little grandson's coming. And I just wanna remind everybody, if you're interested in the Surface Anthology membership, $27 per month. It's all about decorative painting, creating heirloom painted finishes. And what that means for me is that these are painted finishes that are going to age beautifully, like fine Spanish wine. We were talking about Spain today. They're going to get more beautiful as they age. That's the intention. And um, we kind of study uh, different types of paints, all different types of things. The link is in the comments. You could go check it out. Join us. It's a lot of fun. All right. And Deborah's saying, as always, it's good to learn from you and talk to you girls. Yay! You guys have the best weekend ever. And I will see you next week. If you're in my workshop, the Plaster Page Journal, by the way, there's, you could still join that. If you have questions, I see people with questions. Keep them coming. I check every day. All right. And I'll see you all next week. Have a great week.